Welcome everybody and Happy New Year. This is Jim Morantz of Sabre and the Exchange Core community. And we're going to be talking about business today, getting businesses back in business faster. We want to remind you of a recent award that Sabre got. Uh, then we'll take a look at sort of a background for everybody since we do have new people showing up all the time on the challenge and Sabre as a solution to that challenge. And then take a look at Sabre current operations because this is what uh, everybody can participate in in national level exercise uh, 2018. I don't know why I wrote NLE 11. That was the first NLE that we participated in. Uh, next gen Sabre then we're going to focus on about some of the additional capabilities that we're going to be uh, have added and are going to be adding to Sabre. And then finally how to participate in Sabre and NLE 18. So the Individual and Community Preparedness Award that we got uh, over the last uh, month or so since uh, this was awarded. We've participated in a uh, award ceremony and a webinar for the public and there are a couple of other activities taking place and FEMA is about to release a short uh, two-minute movie about Sabre as part of the awards. So just wanted to make you all aware of that. So let's turn to Sabre. Uh, the challenge of Sabre originated from the business community. And the fact that 40% of businesses fail after disaster was prominent in that discussion. The efficiency with which the emergency management community is able to get information about business was the second consideration when Walmart in the state of Florida contacted me and we, sorry, Walgreens in the state of Florida, Florida contacted me and we began to create Sabre. The longer a business is out of business, the greater the chance of failure. Now, big national chains, less likely, less impact than small businesses. However, I can show you three, it looks like, right now, major national companies who, after Puerto Rico, Florida, and Houston, have not opened some of their big monster stores. So this impacts everybody. As a result, for Sabre and your origins of it, are that after life saving, the priority of a community should be to get business back to business. Because business means jobs. Jobs mean people get out of their houses and go to some place where they can work. So even if they have a difficult housing situation, eight hours a day, they're someplace. Business means actually helping people directly, being able to charge phones, use the microwave at a convenience store, have fuel to be able to relocate away from a house or places to stay when they do. We have to be able to see business as a key element of the restoration of normalcy and the recovery of the community. Food, health, commodities, let people get out of shelters. And all those construction stores allow people to actually rebuild and restore their homes. So the philosophy behind those who organize SAVER is that business means the community is returning to normal. So the challenge is how to get businesses back in business faster to support the community and avoid failure. The solution is to influence priorities. And how do we influence the priorities of FEMA, state, local organizations in restoring the community so that they support business? FEMA, a key element of this. SABRE was created by the private sector with the purpose of getting information that can influence priorities. That is simply what's happening in business community today. Sharing that with government organizations and other organizations. SABRE, uh, for those of you who are new, is founded by an organization, organizing group of Walgreens, Walmart, Target, Macy's, Boyd Gaming, Costco, Lowe's, Ears Holdings, 
And if you go on the website, that number has expanded hugely over the last few years. Uh, we operate as a nonprofit. There has been happening since 2014. And as you've seen, we have lots of connections to be able to provide infrastructure and business information to government agencies, local all the way up to FEMA. So the SABRE purpose is to influence recovery priorities by providing accurate and timely business status information. So how does business provide status to SABRE? Let me take you on a little tour here. The popular way is that companies report either to their corporate operations center and then into a BOC or a state uh, or even the National Business Emergency Operations Center. Sometimes just by phone, sometimes by computer. The purpose of SABRE has been to substitute data for calls and emails and anything else that might have been those ways to bring the data in. And we did that with a basic philosophy to not change what business is doing. Because at this moment, business has lots of other things that they have to do. And reporting to government about their status is not one of them. So the concept was fundamentally, and we discovered this from some of the largest corporations in the world, that the way the emergency management business continuity people reported the status of their facilities to chief executives was with a spreadsheet. So we built the, used the technologies in, uh, that were available from the Department of Homeland Security to be able to take those spreadsheets without changing them in any way is, a, is always our goal and move them easily through the Sabre website and into Sabre technology, which is Exchange Corp. So first principle was don't change what business is doing. Literally, just make it one more click for that spreadsheet to go to Sabre rather than just to upper management. When it gets into Sabre, information is transformed into national standard formats, which allow on the receiving end most Software applications that are used in emergency operations centers or public portals or mapping programs to be able to take that Sabre data and begin to display it and use it. Making it as simple as possible. On the bottom side, government agencies don't need any software. It's things that they already have, so no new training, no new lessons. And on the corporate side, same old strategy. That's the goal, that's what's operating today and extraordinarily efficient and effective. But we might be able to eliminate some of those steps and make it even smoother. And we did that first when there is information available from business. We've done direct connections, as you see up on the top. Presently, Walmart is the only group that's doing that, but we've got a couple other companies that are moving in that direction. Secondly, then, we also teamed with an organization called Spot on Response to connect their mobile app directly into Sabre. So three different ways to bring information from companies into Sabre for its distribution to other connected organizations there through their own software. You've got spreadsheets taken through the Sabre website. You've got the mobile app, and you've got the direct connection into your business management systems. But by whatever means, the results of Sabre right now is what we've come to start thinking of as indicators of crisis. The open, closed, special condition or limited hours of operations are indicators of crisis. The scope, what are the number and types of businesses that are reporting they are not fully open. The extent, what's the geographic distribution of those that are reporting that they're not open? And through a project that we've only worked with a couple of the companies, we can then say, okay, how close are replacement capabilities? If this Lowe's is not operating, 
where's the closest Lowe's that people could go to? Another capability of Sabre that we haven't really fully explored yet. But those indicators of crisis allow government to begin to prioritize short-term stabilization of that community by focusing on speeding business reopening. As everybody knows, businesses are open, the community is on its way to recovery. So what we've done at this level is to reduce the level of effort for business, which when we first had the discussions heard Walgreens say, they were called by more than 100 different organizations during a major hurricane that went up the East Coast saying, what's the status of your stores? And reduce the level of effort and ability of government to share that critical decision support information. So that combination of reducing level of effort, providing more accurate information, has been the hallmark of SAVER to date. So let's take a little bit of a look at how people use Saber business status. Uh, FEMA, and this is Hurricane Irma. Uh, FEMA focusing on uh, Florida through the FEMA Geo Portal, producing these type of analytical tools showing the current status of these different classification of categories. One way to do it. National Emergency Management Agency and International Emergency Managers Association Public-Private Portal, interactive tool set. All this is different uses of the same Sabre data that everybody has access to. Focusing again, this was Irma also. Some visualization comparisons, time series of uh, the opening and closing, uh, the geographic look at it, raw data so you can go off and process it yourself. Great, great tool and use of the SABRE data. Georgia Emergency Management Agency, Robbie Bagby did an extraordinary job in putting together this tool set built out of the ESRI tools during the uh, unfolding hurricanes in just a few days. And he's able to clip out just the information from SABRE about uh, Georgia do the spatial analysis, 485 stores closed at that time, do some different categories of business disruption. Very, very useful tool. Again, that indicator of crisis. And if you see a time series of these reports over several days, you see the growth of closures and then the opening as fewer and fewer of these uh, stores are represented on this uh, tool. But those are hard jobs. You can plug Sabre data into a free copy of Google Earth. So nobody should ever not be able to consume the Sabre data. And that's the way we want it. It's got to be easy to use and as easy as possible to provide. Sophisticated programs uh, like ArcGIS Online, many common operating pictures are, are constructed out of this tool and you see all the different uh, categorization of, uh, this is Hurricane Harvey in the Houston area. But then also you can go as simple as browser output. This is an Internet Explorer. We've got a link that you can hit and you can get the list and there's Sears and there's Sam's Club and there's you know, whoever else is up there. That entire list, all the same data that you've been having, here's your text view of it very, very simply. And then some very cool analytical programs have begun to use SAVER. Here are a combination of, Nathal, this is Live Earth, combination of National Weather Service, hurricane evacuation and uh, tidal impact zones, I believe that is, all the SABRE data laid on top of it, and a county level of warning or evacuation warning or something. I forget what the other piece was. But complex information. And some of the things that these folks are able to do is actually do a time series where you can see the, over periods of time, see the number of stores that are closing and literally see that hurricane and the closures begin to move up the coast of Florida. Tremendous things being done with the Sabre data. This we did for FEMA. Uh, they said, show me some statistics about the stores how they're closing and how they're reopening and the little reopening trends chart down at the bottom shows how we lost stores rapidly and then began rebuilding those stores uh, and their availability to the public over the, the several days after the emergency. 
So all those things, the way to get the data in, a spreadsheet format in particular, and the way to get the data out, that's all a function of the basic, no cost, saber operations. I want to emphasize no cost. To provide data or consume data, you simply enroll at saberspace.org. You become a full member if you let us put your name on the website. To provide the information, send us a spreadsheet of the data that you want to share. Let me emphasize that. It's only what you want to share. You have a couple companies that are sharing just one column of data. Well, latitude, longitude, name of the store, and one column of data, open or close. Others that have 10, 15 columns of data that are talking about whether they have generators, making comments, notes on uh, availability of certain supplies, and a couple companies have actually used this to report to government that we have plastic sheeting available, we have you know 50 tons of, of uh, sand here, and whatever the other categories are. So really to push this out and use it more as a commodity uh, provider of information as well. That's entirely up to the company. There's no standard Sabre will accept anything that you're offering. Sabre then develops uh, an ingest template that's sort of the, the, the technology guts of it. All you're ever going to see is on saberspace.org, there's going to be a little button with your company name. And you click on that company name and browse to your upload, uh, to the, the template, the, the spreadsheet you want to upload and do it. You do that daily, great. If you do it hourly, great. We don't care. That's how we get the data into Saber. To consume it, same enrollment. There's a guide to using Saber data that shows your technical people how to do this. And if you can use a Google Earth, you can use it as well. Uh, you can then visualize that Saber status data in your own software any way that you want to. Use it for analysis. Use it to a uh, couple places are putting it out onto public sites. Uh, that's completely fine because there's no concern about sharing the Sabre data among consumers because there's no requirement on the data to put in on the Sabre providers. It's what you want to give us. You don't want to give us information. Don't give information. And you should assume that when you give out information, the consumers can do anything that they want with it. Data for analysis, and what that's going to allow them to do is continually monitor business status to take us back to our original goal of helping prioritize government resources as they get applied to locations in order to open businesses faster. There's our goal. All that does great work in providing those indicators of crisis. There's the next gen saver that we've been working on uh, where we provide more business benefit and better status reporting from not just crisis, but through that period when business starts to get stabilized and then back to normalcy. This is the partnership of Saber, the Exchange Core community, and spot on response, and it's supported by the first responder group of the Director of Science and Technology and Department of Homeland Security. And I want to take you through this because as we lead to national level exercise 18 in May, we want to take some of the pieces of Next Gen Saber and put them in your hands so that we can learn from them and really exercise some of these great new capabilities. So Business back to business faster. Open, close, that's the scope and extent of the disaster. This new project is going to help us answer a few other questions. These, I think, are, are becoming more qualitative questions for the purpose of not only influencing government priorities, but sharing out and building some business to business collaboration that will help all businesses reopen faster. These questions include ways to what the business need to reopen, resupply, what government decisions 
will help business stabilization. Will information help businesses help each other? Will businesses need to sustain a full recovery? And then for our challenge, how do we do this without burdening business more than we help? The focus then in that chart becomes a direct exchange, not just one-way flow of information into SABR, but enabling a two-way exchange between business, business, and government. And we do that through teaming with this spot-on response in their mobile app and web application. Do that by focusing on the business priorities because there's no real direct benefit for businesses take their time to tell government what they're doing, except for establishing the priorities, as I said. But if we could provide a benefit to business, and while they're doing that, peripherally report off to government, that would be a true benefit. We do that currently with that direct connection. I mentioned Walmart. Walmart doesn't have to think about providing information to Saber. Happens all the time. It happens all the time from their business management systems. So what we're getting, going to get is a minimum amount of information, but we will know that crisis information about the status of the Walmart stores. This pushes us a little bit farther with that same philosophy of doing as little as possible with the business in order to get the information that is important to business to begin with. Are the employees available to return to work? What's the physical status of the work facility? What's the supporting infrastructure, that water, electricity, internet? Are those there and available? How does, is transit available to access that site for employees, for consumers and transporters who are part of their supply chain? Am I going to be able to resupply those commodities or raw materials? And then finally, what do I know about sustaining operations? Are my consumers and employees going to continue to be able to get there and continue to report to work and be part of my business process? So if we can collect some of that information, share it to the company, and then as you'll see, they decide what to share out to save. So first philosophy was, okay, employees are the most important assets. What if we give them technology? What if we provide into their existing smartphones the ability to get alerted to events, have a constant situational awareness when things are unfolding, to be able to pull up company plans and procedures that they should be following in an emergency, and for the company to be able to communicate back to those employees with requests or instructions, tell everybody to go show up on this corner because we are going to provide a bus to transport you since all your cars were wiped out in the flood, or whatever the examples were. A way to establish that two-way flow of communication. So there's going to be a benefit to the employee if we put the technology in their hands. Then the employee becomes a resource for the company. They not only will be able to provide information about their availability to report to work, which lets the company know whether they can open that facility, but the company can know where they are and what they might need as in the form of help or support in order to return to work. Employees can then check into their duty station as well as provide some valuable information about the situation from local videos, photos, all the things that you see flying around out there on Twitter, but now they're coming from people you trust, your employees, who may very well be able to influence the way in which your business reopens by their knowledge of the community. So what's that look like? Well, using the, the app that we're talking about, constant situational awareness from hazard monitoring from government services, store the company plans and procedures on there. When something happens, company can alert the employees or put instructions out to employees. The employee, with a touch of a finger, can then say, okay, I'm okay, or are there's some problem here, or there's uh, I'm not available to report whatever phrases the company wants to use in there. They can all be localized and inserted. After that happens, management and colleagues can look on the app 
on a computer or, or on phones or tablets and see where their people are and see what the individual status of each of those people is just by touching them. Plus, get those photos or other on-scene reports that employee has done as part of their reporting. And then down the bottom right-hand corner, management knows everybody. They know whether people have reported in, whether they haven't heard from people, uh, all the status information about those folks to be able to understand whether I've got enough employees to reopen. Or in a project that we've done with some health healthcare folks, I may not be able to open this particular clinic because it has physical damage. As a result, I can take available employees from that clinic and deploy them out to other clinics because we know there's going to be a higher demand for those clinics. So business value out of reporting to government. So that's one level of, uh, and uh, completely optional, whether you want your employees to report, reporting across facilities. So I've got a manager at each one of my facilities. And what I can get is knowing whether my employees are going to report to work or what their needs are. I'm going to get a good picture of local awareness. And I'm going to be able to communicate with headquarters if you've got one uh, and get instructions for them or make requests to them. That information then goes into, if it's a big company, it's going to go into Corporate Operations Center. A smaller company uh, might be directly reporting into a Business Emergency Operations Center at one of the states. But the kinds of information that can then be provided are about the physical facility status, whether utilities are available, do they have the ability to transport people and their customers in that location, and what the status of supplies and resupply are. In short, what do I need to open and sustain being opened? That information looks like this. Again, facility managers just touch on uh, one of those elements to show that there is uh, facility changes in the middle there. Uh, anybody looking at that location on a map sees that, in fact, it is closed. And executives see the entire list of all the facilities and their current status that take, taking place. And then at the company discretion, some of that information can go to SABRA. Certainly everybody agrees if you're participa participating in A and this, the open-closed status will go to SABRA. Well, do you also provide information about related utility needs. Well, it might very well be useful to share to your local government or your state governments to help them better prioritize. If you need a tree removed that's at the end of the block and nobody can get to your store, that's something that you will be obviously expressing to the local police as they walk by, but also by publishing it in Sabre, it can be part of that resource prioritization. So anything from the individuals, your employees who are providing local situational awareness, you can push that through SABRE as well. So perhaps at the national level, you're going to be able to show them a neighborhood that is in dire need, and that will be helpful. Again, all at the discretion of the company, what information gets shared to whom through SABRE. Physical facilities, pictures, utilities, transit, all those other things that are part of the information that we now have available as part of this business improvement that results in better business reporting. So the whole flow of information and our ability to influence priorities beyond that open-closed looks like this. You've got employees who become alerted and aware, who tell their managers whether they're available for duty, and they become the source of trusted observations. So that employee to company value for that information is considerable. Company to government value gives you the facility status, reopening priorities that you can express, and stabilization requirements. What do I need to make certain that uh, my generator is going to be refueled over the, the subsequent periods of time? And coming back to the company then are those priorities for restoration, which importantly, once that information is shared out there, 
is valuable not just for government allocation of their resources, but business to business help. We'd hate to have a store sitting there closed because they don't have a generator while they're waiting for electricity to come back on when a company, and we saw this in, in all the hurricanes, companies are offering free use of generators to get businesses back in business. That availability of the wonderful American donor spirit should be available to companies to become back to part of being part of the community. So what's this, this next generation business model? Companies can subscribe to Spot On Response through Saber to get all the benefits that we just talked about. Seen an example that seems to be emerging where a business emergency operations center at a state level is going to subscribe to Spot On Response and give it to all of its BEOC members. Why? Well, it eliminates their need to talk to every business during an emergency. It speeds and gives more accurate the information that they're getting. By putting it through Sabre, they can put it into their own internal management systems as well as publish it out on their website. So the value that comes from turning all those BEOC members <coughs> into reporters of facility information and local situational awareness is considerable enough that that state is in the process now of subscribing to Spot On Response through Saber. And one other case that looks like it's unfolding also where companies subscribing, giving it to BEOC to give to all the BEOC members. Only that company would have access to do all their, their individual employee management all the other BEOC members would be able to report in only at the facility level. <coughs> so there's continued additional value for that company that is the sponsor of this project. But then, bottom line, that basic Sabre spreadsheet status, <coughs> excuse me, is always at no cost. So this next gen is an optional additional level. Sabre will continue to operate exactly as it has for the last, uh, now almost four years, uh, at no cost and for the benefit of both business and the community. So now, we've got a few months. We're working all these, these different uh, Sabre projects. Let's work them together and lead up to national level exercise. If you want to consume information, in the national level exercise. Simple. You enroll in SABER. You get the guide to working with SABER data. data. You use your own software. Or you can always use the SABER status map that's on the website. What we're going to ask you to do is complete a post-exercise evaluation of SABER status as an influence on priorities. And finally, again, this part costs absolutely nothing ever to collect SABER status, SABER status and use it. To provide SABER status, <clears throat> three different levels. First one is exactly current spreadsheet status, no cost, open, close, special condition status, and any other information you want to provide on that spreadsheet. All you have to do is provide the spreadsheet in advance. To Sabre, we do the integration template, and you then have two different ways to participate. You can participate through the saberspace.org, where you do your own participation in the exercise, publishing as often as you want to, changing status information about your facilities that are affected. And Sabre also sets up a sim center, a little simulation center. So if you say, hey, you know, I I don't have time to do this, but here are all the facilities that are going to be affected in the middle Atlantic states for national level exercise hurricane. We as SABRE are official participants in the exercise, so we know the scenario. So we can take that information about your facilities and we can stage the opening and closing of those facilities to follow the pattern of the exercise. 
So we'll do that for you in the simulation center. We'll help you do that, and you can run the exercise yourself through your connection through saferspace.org, or a combination of the two. You can say, hey, I'm going to do it for the first two hours, and then you guys take it over. That part, again, no cost. That's what Saber is every day. Direct connection, as I mentioned. Walmart does it now. We're looking for a couple of companies who want to do that to provide a direct connection of corporate-wide operating status. And through the DHS Science and Technology Project, we can do that for a couple of companies to complete the integration for NLE 18. So next slide or a couple slides down the line are going to be my address and email information. If you're interested in having a constant connection to Saber about your business status, get in touch with me. We frequently refer to Walmart as a bellwether because in Puerto Rico, we were able to see the extent of this problem by the speed with which Walmart closed their many, many locations, a couple dozen locations in, in um, Puerto Rico. And that was the first indication that business was taking this very, very seriously. We then began getting others who were doing the spreadsheet open, open, or open close status. Uh, Macy's started coming in, Costco, a few others. Uh, and we began to see that that was all being confirmed. But having that automated input of when closures were taking place was very, very useful to the consumers of Saber. We can do that for a couple of other companies. And then there's the mobile app, uh, the Spot On Response mobile app. We've got two projects going on with that right now. The first one is you may very well be getting, being asked to uh, participate in a data collection effort to define the other information that, if you're a company, you might be willing to provide. And as a government, you would like to see during that stage get, that gets beyond crisis. Information like we talked about. Are you on utility or are you on generator? Are the roads clear to get to you? Are your consumers showing up? Do you have enough supply? What's your supply chain look like? All those questions being asked in order to prioritize government resources for keeping you in business. So that's one piece. Uh, and we've got a survey that um, actually is going to be up on the website. You'll hear that announcement at some point in the next week or so. So that's part of it is to figure out what that data is. But we also have a current mobile app that does large portions of this. So we're looking for a few companies that want to pilot the use of that to get information beyond that open close, that <coughs> open close status for Hurricane or for NLE 11. And then finally looking for companies that want to actually deploy that app to some selected employees in a test case. <clears throat> to see what the value is for being able to get employee information, filter that up to a facility, get facility, multiple facility information, filter that up to headquarters, get the headquarters information, move that to selected information to Sabre, and thus be able to expose those who establish priorities in both government and other businesses to know what's going on. That, in a nutshell, is where we want to go. And looking for folks who would be interested in participating in that. So you've got the uh, Saber website, saberspace.org. You can go on there to enroll. That's the first step, uh, enroll. And in the notes, let me know what you want, what you're thinking about, what you'd like to do, or whether you'd like to talk. If you've known Saber for a while and are interested in either having a funded direct connection into Saber, uh, shoot me an email or give me a call. And if you're interested in actually using that mobile app to improve your business operations in an emergency, let us know on that as well, and we'll put you in touch with the right folks. Thanks, everybody. Very much appreciate your participation, and look forward to you uh, challenging Saber to support you 
in the coming real world activities and then in NLA 18. Thanks very much and we'll talk to you next month.